That's 100. All right, y'all. So we are back with another episode of Monday Night Take, man. So this is our last episode of 2022. Crazy. Um, last episode of 2022. So I definitely wanted to end the year off with a bang by really bringing someone that I revere in this space, um, someone who's an expert at what he does. Uh, we got none other than himself, Coach Gene Austin, in the building, in the house. Um, and, you know, he's going to talk tonight about making sure that your business is bank ready, right? And bank ready, trademarked as well. So shout out to him on that. You know, he secured that. Um, you know, someone that I've known for the past couple of years. And, you know, when it comes to business, I feel like there's not really anybody else that really comes first thought of mind when it comes to talking about business credit, when it talks about, when to talking about, you know, the government overall, how you can leverage the government, the SBA to really grow your business. And these are conversations that we really don't always have. And, you know, it's good to talk about the stock market. It's good to talk about the charts. It's good to talk about all those things. But you got to understand businesses at the end of the day, man. You got to be able to really understand businesses because what's trading on the stock market is a business. So if you don't know the principles of business, if you don't understand that, it's going to be difficult for you to be a trader and investor. So these are the type of conversations that I like having because you you can always learn something from this a lot of people think that um you know everything in life is just like a dollar sign get rich quick get rich that but nah it's more to it there's some principles and some practices that you really got to go along and follow so you know we have my brother coach i'm gonna allow him to introduce himself and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this party started man i appreciate you joining yeah man can y'all hear me okay yeah we hear you loud and clear brother Fantastic. Shout out to everybody that came out, man. My name is Coach John Austin. For those who don't know me, I've been in this business space for 17 and a half years now, man. I think next May, like mid-May, will be 18 years. Crazy to say that. It's been that period of time that I've yeah. been in this thing, man. Uh, yeah, newly trademarked brand, bank ready. I love it. Um, started out in the real estate space when I got laid off at Baylor back in 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, I was flipping houses part time and, and in that cancer research space at Baylor. So shout out to that research background, but got laid off and I'm like, OK, what in the heck am I going to do? You know, I'm not, I got a kid, family, house. What was what's, what's the deal? So I jumped into real estate. Fast forward into that, got minority certified and started to really get into the business of it because I, I got to make this thing work. If it doesn't yeah. work, then I'm I'm on the streets. I don't know what else to do. So I got to go all in. I got to get 10 toes down this thing. And got into the business of it, turned it into, let's say, 2008, 2009. I'm on the board of directors for this company called NASCO in Dallas there. And we were working on, a, end up having a five-year, $1.2 billion contract that we were able to work on, man. And that was my first major jump into this space called contracting with the government, contracting locally, and that took off into what you see now, not mainly in the real estate space, but in the in the, in the business strategy space, right? Yeah. And being bankable has always been where you have to be and, and understanding how to plan your way into it. Because trust me, I didn't fall into this thing by accident. Everything we've done, even my first plan that got that deal done was an actual plan I had to write and sit down and write and, and get accepted by a few people before they even let you in the door, man. So that's, yeah. that's me in a nutshell what got me here today, man. Nah, nah, I mean, that's powerful, man. Um, you know, a lot of times I feel like, you know, when you get to a point in life, a pivot that really brings out the best of you. And, you know, you talked about that, you know, many of times with me before. So it's always good to share. So one one question that I have, right, is is what does it mean to to be bank ready to you? Like, what is what does that mean to you in a nutshell? Bank ready to me means twofold. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm ready for the bank meaning that I'm sitting outside the door. I've got all my ducks in a row. I know how much money I need, and I'm ready to walk into this bank, CDFI, grant, wherever the money's at. 
I'm ready to get this money. I'm ready to put it to work. When mm-hmm. I say ready, are you underwriter ready? Meaning the first person you talk to is not the person that's going to sign off on that money. Fact. Do you have your numbers in order to say, hey, I need $50,000 to do one, two, and three. Yeah. And that's going to help me grow and scale. That's bank ready in and of itself and having all your plans, all your your data ready to go so you can articulate your message. And more importantly, when you leave, who's your representative yeah. for that business, for that ask when you leave, right? Mm-hmm. One, two, and, and mainly I want to I want you to be bankable for the marketplace. Okay. And the, is the marketplace is going to cut you a check, meaning are they going to let you in to do what you have to do? Mm-hmm. That gift that God gave you that you're going to monetize on that. Does the marketplace want that? It's kind of like dating. You may want her, but does she want you? And can you make that thing work like it needs to? So being yeah. bankable for the marketplace, that in and of itself is bank credit, man. Yeah. Nah, 100 percent Because, you know, my 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 thought process, you know, in that is a lot of times, you know, I feel like, you know, minorities, we get we get kind of like shook and scared of the bank, right? I feel like that's one place that we really haven't like a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't I don't want to go to bank route. Like, you know, a lot of times people are like, you know, if I've had certain people say, you know, I'm scared of, you know, certain things. And, you know, we haven't historically had the best type experience with the bank. Right. You know, it's not like it's been super, super long to where blacks could actually even be bankable right you know so that's a conversation in itself you know just even me stating that so what what could you say for someone right now because we went also through this period of like during the pandemic where everyone wanted to like get run out and get llcs and people were told hey just go and get you a llc use your personal credit to guarantee business credit and get 25 or 25,000 to a quarter million dollars worth of business credit, but like you don't even really have a business like that. And yeah, you might be able to get the credit, but it's like, what are you going to do with it? You know, like, what do you say to those people? Because, you know, you have things that are happening right now with rising interest rates where credit is becoming more expensive. I just think it's really dangerous, you know, that we have people saying, hey, go and get all this credit, go and get all this credit without proper planning. Like, I really want to touch on the business planning part side tonight so people understand even how publicly traded companies do their business planning. Oh, wow. That's a that's a heavy one, but I'm glad we're getting into it. Every company, every business has to have a plan before you even write your plan. Yeah. If we go to the SBA right now, SBA.com, and look at the Small Business Administration's website, the number one thing they're going to tell you before you get an LLC before you get a bank account is study your market, study your market. What market, if I'm in real estate, culinary, selling t-shirts, whatever, you want to study your market and understand what you're about to jump into. Yeah. That's, that's the first place we go. And I'm, I'm writing a white paper on this exact thing. We fail at business for so many different things, lack of funding, lack of this, lack of that, but it's not the really, we're not failing because we don't have enough funding. We're failing because we didn't plan for the right type of funding, the gotcha. right type of leverage and debt. Right. Gotcha. Like we, we didn't establish that relationship. We, we didn't study the market to see, well, do I need a loan? Do I need a line of credit? Do I need business credit, corporate credit? What do I need? And who am I discussing this with? Yeah. Right. That off the muscle should be the first thing we do before we then write down what it is we need to get into. Because sometimes mm-hmm. we ask them for the wrong type of money. I see on Instagram way too much. Go get yeah. this bag, that bag, 50 racks or whatever. I'm like, did you see the interest rate on that card? And where is the revenue to yeah. service that debt? Yeah. That's the big part. Be careful who's telling you to get a certain kind of debt. And then I show you how to grow revenue to pay that debt down. And then at the end of the day, have enough net profit to keep that business going long term. Yeah, because I see that's an issue that a lot of people are running into right now is like, You know, they had, you know, they were at a point where they were making a good amount of money, but, um, you know, they, they racked up on so much credit and was just using credit for everything. And then they had to obviously pay that back. And then, you know, now you're seeing that even in the stock market space where you had a bunch of growth businesses who were cash flowing pretty nicely during the pandemic and even pre pandemic. Right. But then that cash flow kind of like got minimalized. Right. 
and then they racked up a bunch of debt and then that debt got more expensive and now what's happening is you know people these businesses and people are hurting because they racked up on a bunch of debt very quickly when money was very easy right where money was very cheap and so can you talk about that how the the way that business changes in a recession too like i don't think people understand that as well too things get tighter budget gets tighter i hear a lot of people talking about well you know people are getting laid off etc i mean that's what's going to happen when budgets get tighter the first place they go to is employment because employment is your biggest expense as a business so could you talk to um you know that like how how can people manage to actually get employees because i think sometimes people are scared to get employees too in our community because of the costs associated with it um and then just proper you know just sometimes that mismanagement as well of funds yeah mismanagement of the funds will kill you mismanagement of not having policy procedures and just sops period we mm -hmm. all start off as solopreneurs all of us do and shout out to everybody who's trying to start out out the gate everything you're doing please document every task every tittle every little bitty thing you're doing no matter yeah. if i'm offshore when i was doing safety contracts for sparrows offshore or if i'm doing my own business in real estate for my clients document everything at one point in time you're going to have to take your hands off the wheel and when you start scaling you've got to be the intellectual property and allow someone else's skill set mm -hmm. who's good at admin who's good at social media who's good at x y and z to take that over right yeah. and then let you again be the captain of your ship and allow that to work for you hiring somebody man please hire i'd rather get 70 percent of somebody's best work than 100 percent of mine because i can only go so far yeah. So for entrepreneurs, I mean, VAs are phenomenal. Hiring kids out of college is phenomenal. Tapping mm -hmm. into the legal resources at the university systems is phenomenal. So please yeah. do not be afraid to hire, man. Yeah, no. I, I, I recently hired, I recently hired like pretty much like my first employee. And, you know, someone that's pretty much in school right now. And, you know, it's really been a blessing, you know, for me. Like, and that was one thing I think I can even attest to this and, and talk about this. I think it's, part of the cultural trauma that we go through as black people where um you know we're sometimes like conditioned to you know like it's difficult sometimes for us to work with other people because a lot of times there's a lot of backstabbing right and i think part of it is the procedure the business planning i think a lot of times you know they talk about in real estate you make your money at the table well also i believe the same thing in business right you make your money at the deal table right so when you're drawing up the plans when you're drawing up the execution all of that that's where you really make your money and then you got to go out there and do it no, so no. you know i think that's one important part that you know I, I wanted us to like really mention as well too like what would you say like what spaces can people get in what rooms can people get in because a lot of times you know i'm saying you're going to this room you're going to that room and you've been able to kind of maneuver yourself right don't don't let don't let a uh, coach uh fool you here man coach is in the room with some heavy hitters you know you've been in rooms with you know some of the top tier banks that some of these people on the line here tonight may even bank with right you've sat down with some of their top officials and been in top board meetings and things like that like how are you able to maneuver yourself to get in there and really and really get this game right i mean from from day one right and shout out to actually going into a lot of us not college let's let, let's put a pause on that we we knocked the college system too much and networking within that space is is, is powerful mm -hmm. but just taking the taking what you do in the marketplace and going to chamber of commerce meetings i've always gone to those mm -hmm. going to your local procurement meetings the business mindsets established there right so for our capital one for chase for wells for all these CDFIs. So when I walk into the room, I'm building relationships with them because I know they have what I need. I know they have what my clients need. So when I'm in these spaces, I let them know, listen, I'm a CEO of a business strategy firm. Okay. We do diversity equity consulting. I have this many clients. I need them to work with you. What do you need? Okay. Yeah. Here's what we do. Here's a sample of our business plans. Here's a sample of our performance, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that conversation gets me in the door. But then the consistency keeps me in the door, right? So now I can walk into the Greater Houston Procurement Forum and the head uh, business banker for Capital One walks me in the door. 
hey, mm. get with him. I'm, I'm in the middle of a conversation. He's like, hold on, get with him, then come get with me. Yeah. Bankers just don't do that if they don't know you can perform. Yeah. So now I've got a line of clientele coming from multiple banking institutions, right? Yeah. So for me, it's just being consistent and really knowing how to attack that underwriting. Because I know for her, the more loans she does, the more lines of credits that they do, right? That's and the more my heart of business is performance out the gate. I'm yeah. helping her get her bonus. Yeah. And she keeps coming back because I'm sending her clients. She's sending me something, I'm sending her clients. So that's one of the main ways I'm able to get in there, man. It made yeah. this thing work for anybody, quite frankly. Yeah. So it's being strategic about it, definitely. So very you know, let's talk about the SBA, because you know, we had um we had a lot of people that fraudulently got funds from the SBA, you know, via the PPP program. But you know, the SPA, you know, SBA is is really, you know, one of the best places out there for people to go ahead and get those allocation of funds. Could you talk about the SBA and the ways that people can properly, without going through doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, how they can properly, you know, really get their business funded by the SBA and those processes? I will say this, though. Um, I do a lot of business acquisitions and financial due diligence and operational due diligence on companies. Mm -hmm. When clients of mine are buying an existing business, we can get into that later. But when I'm looking at these tax returns, there's no reason why you need to fraudulently go after these funds. Mm -hmm. I, I probably go over 10 businesses a week and 9.5 out of 10 of them on their tax returns, you'll see PPP loan paid off, PPP loan paid off, PPP loan forgiven, da, 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 da. Because they have a legitimately structured business and they took their real tax returns and applied it to this program that some of us say was a scam or they were afraid of it. But that's why I say we got to start doing business the right way and you'll get the benefits of that. So when it comes to the SBA, the SBA has approved lenders, right? Mm -hmm. They'll guarantee between 70 and 90% of some of these loans. Okay. Now, we don't have to go to the top five banks, Bank of America, Wells, et cetera. You should ultimately, yes, get an account with Chase, get an account with the big five. But I want you to start with your credit unions. Those community yeah. development financial oh, institutions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wanted sure. you to touch on that because I think a lot of times people overlook, you know, the small community bank that might be just right there in your local county, you know, and they're ready to work with you. And you might be able to honestly, like you said, like you have these big banks, the Bank of America's JP Morgan Chase, et cetera. But these small banks right here, you know, they will set you up. You me and you was even talking because about Citizens Trust Bank. That bank is here in Atlanta. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know, coach. You know, I have an account with them. You know, they treated me fairly well. You know, I'm going to be real. They treated me better than where you go to the big five banks. And the point of what I'm saying is, it's like. You know, it's always good to have, you know, I feel like a relationship with some of these smaller banks um, because they, I feel like you have more reach to them, more access to them directly, and you can kind of better relationship build with those people there. So, yeah. Oh, no doubt. I mean, everybody here that, that's watching this, I really hope we can. You, you mentioned a good word, develop a relationship with those community development financial institutions, those nonprofit banks. Those yeah. CDCs or community development corporations, right? Those are, they have money from the United States Treasury that are in here, especially for minority businesses. Mm -hmm. So you walk in there, you start to develop a relationship. And I teach my bank ready clients this develop a relationship with that financial institution. Let them know what you're doing. Make sure you walk in there with your NAICS code, right? Understand your industry code and tell them, this is what I'm trying to do. This is my background. This is this, whatever. And they will start to dialogue with you what you've got to do, how yeah. much money you need, the right type of money you need. And they have the money there for you. That cares like money that, that, that came from the United States Treasury went to Native Americans, Alaskan Indians, and minority businesses. But they went all to all through CDFIs. That's where the money's at. And yeah. if we can develop a relationship with that institution, they'll take care of you. There's less turnover because it's the same people for the most part there. They all yeah. know each other. And nine out of 10, you can drive down Westheimer. You can dive, drive down Peachtree in Atlanta. The, a lot of these banks don't even advertise. Yeah. So I can teach you how to run up a real bag and get a good money from good institutions. Yeah. You can walk away with probably a good two, three hundred thousand dollars hitting up these small institutions. But yeah. they will help you grow and scale your business because they're attached to the community and they have to do that. Yeah. What would you say? Great, great, uh, great point that you made there when when going through the process, because uh, this is a question that I feel like a lot of people, 
you know, always want to ask when it goes to when it goes back to um, you structuring, right? Um, how when you're structuring and creating your LLCs and you're creating your business, um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of having a holding company? Right. Because uh, I think uh, can you talk about because sometimes, you know, there's a lot of hot takes on the Internet, man, where I just feel like people make a one minute reel to sound like they know something. And, you know, it, it sounds good, but it just doesn't really do it justice. So could you talk a little bit about the holding company? Because everybody got this irrevocable trust and we can get you uh bank bank in this infinite bank like there's just a lot of stuff out there i want us to like really be delicate in how we're you know really speaking and breaking this stuff down so people can digest it and everyone can learn from it so can you just talk about having a holding company and how this could really be effective for you on the tax side of things yeah um public service announcement quit getting your advice from instagram please <laughs> god um, two people b b before I jump into that question, I have to give, some, give a backdrop. A holding company is great. I mm -hmm. have one, I have a trust, right? I've got an LLC, S Corp. Okay, get with a CPA who understands your industry first. Yeah, get with an attorney who understands your industry. That's your that's your offensive defensive coordinators right there. Yeah, gotcha. they will tell you what to get as far as a legal structure is concerned, mm -hmm. right. I don't like the sole proprietorship thing, but it's a legal entity, right? Mm -hmm. I would rather you have an LLC out the gate, but based on what your industry is doing, based on the revenue, based on the company, based on how you maneuver, mm -hmm. you might need to start it with an S corp, right? Yeah. You know, uh, the holding company for Bank Ready is Austin Business Strategies, right? That company, that that entity owns the trademark. Mm -hmm. It owns the intellectual property. I have a trust holding company that owns that. But okay. that's structured based on how I move. So a holding company really depends on what it's holding. Yeah. You know, you can have your real estate, right? Like my mom's property in Louisiana and I'll land there. That's going to be in a trust and that's held a certain way. Mm -hmm. So depending on your tax structure, your tax uh, liabilities, da, 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 everybody's going to every, be different. Every, every, everyone's different. And I'm glad every you said that because it's different, bro. Because like Everybody. people try to give like absolute answers. And I think the point that I wanted to prove right there is that everyone's situation is going to be different. There's no absolute that you have to do this. So, you know, I think it's like, like you said, you have to get with the professionals. Um, you have, you know, people who are professional, um, I'll give a couple of shout outs to uh, people. We have uh, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Abrams. She's a CPA. Shout out to her. And we also have Abby, um, the real, uh, the real relationship accountant. Um, she's very good as well, too. So, yeah, having a proper accounting team, having a proper CPA, like you have to go see them. You know, I think it's important because that kind of stuff gets thrown around. And I think that, um, you know, ultimately people just you know, run with, okay, well, this person said this, so I got to set this up. You know, I, I just think it's, you know, it's, it's just a dangerous game. So I definitely wanted, you know, you to highlight that. I also wanted to ask you a question in the past. So, you know, we talk a lot about price to earnings ratios here when it comes to the stock market. And we talk a lot about businesses being profitable on paper, right? Producing a positive net income, not really taking on a lot of debt. How much cash do they have on hand? When it comes to you buying a business, right? So I'm going to equate you buying an existing business to just like us. We're going to buy a stock. We're buying a, a we're buying a business that we believe our dollars as an investor will go into this company um, and will return us equity in return of that. So what's your what's your process of buying businesses? Because that's also a hot topic on social media as well. Oh, you know you can buy this business and this and that and that and you know, no one's really no one's really broken down to, I feel like, a point where the everyday person can understand. And some people are like, what? I can buy an existing business? I never knew that. Right. So how can someone go about buying an existing business that already has payroll set up, is already automated, um, even if it's not automated, and it's like a storefront? I know you was telling me one time, you know, there was there was a couple of businesses, you know, that you could that you could actually go ahead and, and buy into. And I was like, wow, like this is information that, yo, I, I know would be helpful to other people. Definitely for me, I'm like, wow, like buying a business that's already there. I mean, it doesn't, it, when you start to think about it, it doesn't sound impossible, but 
for an everyday black person, that's not a conversation that you're being had at the dinner table. It's just not happening. True. Um, but we definitely gonna turn that thing up today because I want us to understand starting a business from scratch is hella hard. Oh yeah. my God. And I've done them. I don't want to if I don't have to. Not if I don't have to. Yeah. You can buy an existing business. You can. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been around it for a while. We even have a service, financial diligence, FDD, where I'm combing over. Did one today for a, a VIP client of mine. And I don't work on the holidays, but he's making this acquisition. So before Christmas, even today, I sent off a financial due diligence report. So he's yeah. like, hey, coach, here's the business. I like it. I need you to go through all the data. And I went through three or four years of tax returns, P&L, profit and loss statements, cash flow statements. I'm looking at the, the SIM, the broker report. Right. I'm looking at org charts, everything about this business, bank statements for the last two years. And I'm making yeah. sure everything lines up. And this is a healthy business. There's a lot yeah. of baby boomers who are retiring. Businesses are 10, 15, 20 years old. They're yeah. ready to retire and the kids don't want to take it over. Yeah. So just like you buy real estate on the MLS, there's broker sites with businesses all over the place. Laundry mats. Um, lawn care services, everything from that to electrical companies, mm. you know, that work with the unions. Yeah. So when we're looking at that, it is it is a real, real thing to buy an extensive business. And you mentioned the SBA. When we're looking at credit, right, a lot of us are going off on this credit thing and we're trying to get credit based on our personal FICO scores, our personal history. Mm -hmm. When you're getting loans to purchase these businesses, a lot of times the owner will do owner financing to a certain percentage, if not the whole thing. Yeah, I wanted you to touch on that because I think that's yeah. important. And the owner financing, they'll set the terms, they'll set the interest, and they'll give you a, and, and that right there, that's a gem <laughs> right there. I want you to expound on that because that, I feel like that would help a lot of people go a long way because I feel like the, I feel like the lending system it, it, it's very predatory. It's very it predatory towards towards black people. I mean, we've seen what was it like three hundred thousand like mortgage applications from Wells Fargo not be approved for black. It's just a it's just a, a lot of. So if you can find ways to go around the traditional FICO course FICO score system, I mean, man, I mean that that right there is something powerful. So oh yeah, I'm gonna give it a game. That, Talk about that owner financing and how those terms can work and be flexible for somebody. Of course. Uh, I, I, I'll give an example. One of my clients now, uh, Brother Cherry, he's buying an electrical company in New York. Okay. Right? So it's a woman-owned business already. Okay. It's got contracts already. The, the, the owner has to sell because her husband is in hospice. So he's passing and she wants to kind of let the business go. Gotcha. We negotiated a, a scenario to where she'll do a certain percentage owner financing. She's going to stay on as a consultant to make yeah. sure that that learning curve is there, that her staff is good. And yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll do only a certain percentage, but we'll do an SBA loan. Yeah. So the SBA is not going to look at the black person applying for the business. They're going to look at the business itself. Yeah. And the SBA is really strong on not being biased racially one way or the other. They want small businesses to thrive. They have to. There's yeah. mandates in place. And you'd be surprised. They actually buck on um, banks that don't do what they're supposed to do. So you can yeah. have a business from a laundromat to, and I can even talk about how you take those businesses and go get government contracts with them later on. But that business, man, that owner financing, they know what revenue they've gotten for the last 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, okay, I'll, I'll finance X. Here's the numbers. Here's how much revenue it is. Pay me X amount for three years. I'm good. Yeah. Right. Let them even get paid as a consultant or as, a, as, as an owner to help you through that piece. They get an election money. They come in once in a while, they'll help you out, but you run it. But you're the owner. You're not the one actually doing the work necessarily. So it can be a very, very passive situation. You know what I'm saying? No, no matter what the business is. And yeah. but the owner financing piece is you and that owner. That owner saying, Hey, I'll do a certain percentage owner finance. But the yeah. SBA loves, loves existing businesses, and they'll even fund you to expand another location. Mm -hmm. So the SBA has a, a, a ton of capital for that. A ton. They'll do a 504 loan. Well, they'll do like a 7A loan product sometime with a 504 piggyback is what it's called. Okay. So there's and there's a number of CDFIs, a number of SBA approved lenders that love those type of businesses because they've been cash flowing. And you teach your guys how to go through the P&L statements, things of that nature. 
Yeah. So the same thing you do when you're looking up a stock, which is a company anyway, I want to exactly. see how healthy this business is. Yeah. So it's the same. Exactly. So it's the same principles. And I think that basically the same thing that people people have to and this is why it's important to understand the principles of business right because a lot of people have been getting clapped in the stock market this year coach mm -hmm. and i told them pay attention to the principles the things that are showing you right here on paper right take a look at the way that these companies are moving why would you want to invest in a business that's consistently losing money quarter by quarter year over year and not giving money back to its shareholders right so the the reason why i wanted to bring you on today is so people can understand the principles of business and not only getting your business bank ready but also your portfolios the more information that you know here you're going to be able to transition transition th all of this stuff into the stock market right this year we've seen a lot of businesses really go under because they didn't have the right principles right i know you guys have seen carvana carvana has went under because carvana is not a good business it is not a good business not good practices predatory lending right leads to now we're looking carvana stock right so you have to pay attention to the economics too which is where i come in right i'm always telling people pay attention to this report pay attention to that report right now you had the most cars being repossessed ever right now you're seeing mortgage demand hit its lowest level since 2001. all these things ain't happening by accident right it's happening because the principles of business have just changed in the, in this time right now and you have to be able to understand and maneuver as time goes along. So, you know, coach, you're dropping some true gems right now. Um, you know, I got some more questions for you um, when it comes to. So you you mentioned you mentioned a part with the SBA, which I which I thought was neat. Um, wh when it comes to buying an existing business, what kind of is the qualifications? Like how much cash does someone really need to bring to like the closing table? How much does it actually cost? Does it cost to actually buy an existing business? Like, you know, from maybe a low scale to a higher scale would have been kind of some of the, you know, price ranges, you know, that people have had. I mean, I've I've done it. Clients of mine have done it. Clients that I work with have done it. You'd be surprised. Nine point yeah. five out of ten, they're not coming to the table with much cash at all. OK, not not much at all. I'll say a good, healthy business. It's say on the low side. Say his revenue is about three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, okay. Um, we'll use a seller discretionary earnings model or EBITDA model multiple to see what the asking price will be. Okay. So let's just say the asking price is let's just say four hundred thousand. Okay. All right. Um, and we negotiate that. This is a nice round number. They'll owner finance half, and we'll finance the other half. Okay. We can do a deferred down payment situation to where the down payment again this is a business now i'm buying yeah. their asset their intellectual property everything yeah, staff, everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. ff and e for furniture equipment contracts yeah. uh their relationships i'm getting everything right and you got to realize though this is this person's baby that they've ran for 15 plus years or so right seven eight ten years or so so i get everything at my disposal so when i'm doing these yeah, due like, diligence i look at it like you buying a restaurant like you oh, buy, yeah. you buy, I'm, I'm gonna use it. You buying the hottest restaurant in town, and they wanted to sell it to you. And guess what? People already come there to eat. You just took over. You just bought it. Like you, I mean, I'm not saying that you're not putting in any work. You are, but I'm just saying they already done did the hard work for you. Everybody already know that they make the best mac and cheese in town. They make the best baked beans. They make the best burgers. You feel me? So they know that they come in there. It's your job to just kind of like now how can you scale it maybe further how can you add some new infrastructure right so it makes I'm sense good. you know what's crazy is like now that you're talking about this right now right it actually makes sense because a lot of times this is where i say you got to pay attention to how things change in real life i know when i was growing up right when i was eight nine ten eleven twelve years old there would be certain places that i would go to that would say hey new management under control so it kind of it, it really makes sense now right new management under control new company took over it really makes a lot of sense now how it actually happened so i just feel like the, a lot of this stuff we already really know but we've kind of just really been oblivious to it and really just wasn't really paying attention but it's really kind of eye-opening to me 
I want to add one more piece to that if we can, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody out there is like, wait, hold on, hold on. I can do this, right? We, especially the culture, we we try to get things so quick. Sometimes we fall for the scammy social media, this, that, the third, all the bad advice. Mm -hmm. If you took that same business idea and you turn it into a model, a business plan of how you're going to take that existing business and sustain it and then scale it over time, you're buying not just an asset, you're getting the bank statements too, by the way. Don't forget, if there's a certain amount of cash on hand, that turns over to you. But ultimately, and I want the culture to get this, ultimately, you're buying time, which is something we've never been able to do before. We're buying the asset called time. I'm buying 15 years all at one time. I got it. And I got the, 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 the eloquence of the person that ran it in my face for six months, two, three years. You can't beat that with a stick. Yeah. Ever, 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 ever. So now I walk my whole family into now I own it. You have staff already there. They don't want to lose their jobs. And that's the it, they worry about, man, am I going to get let go? What's going to happen? No, y'all stay. Don't move. Do what you do. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to bring in the, the most seasoned person and make them a manager and give them equity into yeah. the business. What? Yeah. That means I got to do less work because they want to keep their jobs, especially right now. Yeah, you want to so, get it. It's good, to, it's good to overpay and over deliver to people right now, especially. Man, in the somebody well, put in the uh, chat the trade lines. You buying the trade lines? You're buying credit. Yeah, you're buying. So credit. If, if I go and look at that down in Bradstreet Street and their paydex and this that, and the third, I see who they bank with. Oh, gee, it's, I'm running it up because at a certain point you don't need your personal anymore. Now you're really into the business credit yeah. and the corporate credit side of things. Oh, you can run now. That's a bag. Forget a bag. A bank. Now you can bank your own business. And this is where being bankable in the marketplace comes in. Man. Yeah. Nah. So now, so now, okay. So now you're bankable. So now you can go ahead and you can leverage that business that you bought. You can, you can leverage, let's say they've been around 30 years and they had credit for, we'll just say 27. You can now leverage that 27 year old profile that they have on that business to you go can. in. And that's where your business plan really comes in. Now I take what's there. And that market research becomes more finite, more in scope, right? Now I can take the business plan that I had already and really build it into what do I do with this business and how do I sustain it, take mm -hmm. it to scale and be at scale, which is something we don't yeah. talk about much. And then yeah. how do I do I do another location? Can I? Yeah. Right. And that's where the planning and the strategy really, really comes in. Yeah. No, I think that's super important, man, because it's like. I just think a lot of people just don't know about it and there's mm -hmm. the, and there's a lot there's a lot of just like kind of like clickbait stuff that really doesn't explain it but i think you're breaking it down in a way that people can grasp it now so uh you know essentially now when it comes to the market research side right um what are some good like what what are some good businesses overall that you feel like is i won't say easy but are that you've seen that are more bankable than others what are some businesses that you've seen that people have been able to purchase that are more bankable than others because you've been here i've been hearing about this this i've been hearing these these people they're like yo if you ain't get the storage unit you got to get the storage facility the banks love it you know you've been hearing you've been hearing that a lot um so what what what, what would you what would you say is like some good business ideas that people could you know that that banks are like hey we like to we like to lend on this because banks when it comes to the business side they're lending based upon profit they want to see what what are you going to be bringing in every single month every single year they want to they want to know hey is this worth the return it's not like for example can you just pay this you pay this uh car note payment or pay this mortgage payment every month they're not looking for that they're looking for is this a how long can this business last so what are some what are some good businesses that you think you know you know people can tap into? Uh, recession proof businesses. And I'm gonna tell you about the real recession proof. If we are in a recession now, what mm -hmm. businesses made it through the last one? Number one, and the reason why I say that is because there is a risk model. Mm -hmm. Yahoo Finance has it as a risk threshold model that each business has. Okay, and if you guys really dove into dig into Yahoo Finance, you'll you'll tell what business has what. Take into consideration 
what does the marketplace need right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are we at now? And if I looked at the market, what is it asking for more than anything else? Yeah. Where is my revenue going to come from? Okay. Yeah. I want you to, everybody put in chat if you can, uh, nakes.com, N-A-I-C-S.com. You said market research. I want to take the industry code of whatever business I'm going to get into, and I'm going to say, what is the trillion dollar bill that just came through for the for the government last year, uh, last week? Right. Yeah. Where is the money going? Real estate development, professional services, okay, healthcare, yeah, logistics, which is trucking. Okay. So if I look at those industries and I put those codes in there, and I put that code in nakes.com, healthcare, whatever, it'll and I click on that number, it'll give me the top 10 revenue driving companies in that Nakes code. Okay. Free game, free game. Never probably been mentioned on social media ever before. Go to nakes.com, put in that industry code, healthcare, real estate, whatever in real estate that you're in. And you can tell what those top 10 revenue driving companies are doing, mm -hmm. how long they've been doing it. And that'll tell you right there, if they were doing this in 06, 07, 08, and they made it through till now, where's the government putting money at right now? Mm -hmm. to where I can fall in line with that, with that business and with that industry to make sure I can make my moves there. Yeah. That's, that's the, if you do that research, clip that study it, man, listen, if we, if we do that, we'll get away from, well, God told me to do this. Listen, faith without works is dead. This is the work. And it's not hard work because the data is there. We just have to know how to attack the data. Yeah. We're studying that market. And when I said be bankable for the marketplace, if the marketplace is asking for more trucks to hit the road, but well, where is that money for trucking going in logistics? Yeah. Where, right? For real estate, as affordable housing, y'all see these big firms buying up all these residential houses and doing this whole rental thing. How do you get into the game? Housing authority, things of that nature. So the money is there. We just have to study the market and where is the government spending the money, follow the money, and that'll tell you where to go. Yeah, so following the money. Now, it makes sense because- Got you. You know, um, you know, we hear a lot about government contracting as well, too, and, and following the money. You know, it was, it was crazy for me to see, like, you know, the government will, was literally paying people to, uh, you know, make content for them, like just stuff like that. They contract them for that. So when it comes to like, you know, people's different options of government contracting, right? You know, what 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 are some options out there for people? Because I think that's a space even as well, too. Like you hear about it, you know, we got people like you and Travis that are really high level in it. But I think as far as just the everyday black person, when it comes to government contracting, it's kind of like, like if you say government contracting, people look at you kind of just crazy and like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I and I and, and the reason why we got to have these conversations, because these this is what we should be talking about. What is it? Eight forty at night here, seven forty where coach is. These are the conversations we should be having. Everyone's worried about Tory Lanes and Meg Thee Stallion. Everyone's worried about P. Diddy had another baby. Everyone's worried about every single celebrity and who they day in, who they cheated on somebody with, who they, who's divorcing. All this stuff, none of that stuff makes you money. It all leads you to being broke and scrolling on the internet all night and you gossiping in your group chats. But when we talk about government contracting, we get quiet. When we talk about the procurement space, we get quiet. When we talk about bank ready, we get quiet. When we talk about the stock market, we get quiet. All right? So we got to change up the way that the conversations that we have. I'm looking to change the conversations. Most 23-year-old men want to have conversations about women and weed and just bs all day i don't want to have that conversation i want to have a conversation about money how can i grow spiritually not just financially but also how can i grow in my educational and health as well too so these conversations right here even i'm learning i don't i don't know half the stuff that coach is talking about right now but best believe i'm taking a lot of notes mentally i'm gonna go and look some of this stuff up and guess what we're gonna end up coming out on top from it so these are the things that i feel like we got to have more conversations about because, you know, coach, I know when you're going to these meetings, it's not a lot of black and brown people that's necessarily up in these meetings and spaces. And how can we change that? We keep talking about reparations, but we ain't even ready to repair ourselves. How can you talk about reparations, but we're not even acknowledging that there needs to be repair within ourselves? We, we haven't had no type of change of mindset. 
So, you know, I think it's super, super important that, you know, we touch on this stuff, man. And, and what you're given is a, what a lot of us, we don't know, but we're looking to know. So we want to thank you for that. Yeah, man. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, I can give, hang around me for six months. I'll change everybody's dynamic. And I'm not saying that to for clickbait, to sound whatever. I'm, we're not the number one diversity equity consulting firm for nothing. And I'm not the best business strategist for nothing. I put a lot of time into this stuff, like a lot. And when we say government contracting, when we say for me, the art of procurement, our reparate, okay, if we're in the United States corporation, mm -hmm. go to White House, go to Dun & Bradstreet and put in the White House corporation and go see who the principal officer is, Joe Biden. Everything's a company, man. Every every state has an EIN number. Yeah. This whole thing's a business. Everything's a business. So we want to talk about reparations. That bill that I put on my Instagram just the other day and all the money that's in these CDFIs, that's our reparation because mm -hmm. they're not giving us a hard time for it. All the ladies and all, all the ladies out here, getting yourself certified is the ticket, the key that opens up the door to these business opportunities, man. So when we hear government contracting and procurement, you won't get scammed if you're in the right rooms. So when y'all see me posting about the Greater Houston Procurement Forum, or I got clients in Atlanta and Florida, and they're going to these Chamber of Commerce meetings, you see where the money is and where the business opportunities are. And yeah. they'll tell you exactly what they're doing, how much mm -hmm. money they got, how yeah. many women they need, how many Latinos, how many African Americans. You see it all is right there. So yeah. now you have to get your plan in order and you strategically align yourself with the right agency and group because they've got the opportunity, but they need you to do the work. Yeah. Right. So the real game would be if I'm in real estate, let me go buy an HVAC company that's got the past performance already. Yeah. Owner finance that bad boy, put it underneath my umbrella. And now I have a, a joint venture contract with the owner. So that's my company now. And now I can go be a subcontractor on this medical center project going on right here in Houston. I don't yeah. need to have done AC work 50 years. I've got it already. Right. And that's a contract with the government because government is school systems. Right. All universities, that's government. Yeah. University of Texas, LSU, all that. That's all government. Right. So if, if they're building a quad out at PV, I mean, I've, I've got a government contract with PV and SBA teaching the same thing over there. Same stuff. And can you talk? Can you talk a little bit about? Because I've heard this, and I, I and I want to test a valid valid statement of this. Like the government can't buy certain things from corporations; they have to buy it from a middle person, a middleman per se. So, Ooh, okay, so, okay, okay. so, so, for example, like the government can't just go and buy Apple iPads from Apple; they got to go and get it from a from from a third party seller, right? And so could you, uh, and I'm just using that just as an example, it can be used for other, other products as well too. But could you talk about that? Like setting up things like that, because people are making a killing from being, you know, a third party source, but contracting with the government and pretty much becoming the middleman. And how I feel like, I feel like a lot of times we use middleman services as black people a bunch, but we never take advantage of middleman services. Like, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think we take advantage. Everything we use in the United States of America is a middleman service. When you go and spend right now, you want to go to Chick-fil-A, you about to use Visa. Okay. So Visa is the middleman service that's giving your money right from you to Chick-fil-A. Visa is the middleman yeah. service. So how can we become that middleman service for the government? I want to use a different term. And I'm okay. actually glad you brought up middleman. Because according, according to the FAR, Federal Acquisition Regulation, that's like the Bible for government contracting. Okay. Uh, be careful, everybody. And I'm so glad you brought up, some, I, know, I know you talked about it earlier, that middleman thinking is going to get some of y'all, just like PPP, in trouble because yeah. you have to be doing the work. So I'm glad you brought it up, right? Okay. I want us to all think about how am I going to be a vendor mm -hmm. on so-and-so's list, gotcha. right? Because you got to do the work. So if if there's a contract out for, okay, so the Federal Aviation Administration, mm -hmm. they buy everything from paper clips to missiles. Yes. Everything in between. So to do business with them, 
you have to be certified so they know who you're who you are and they only do business with other businesses right not with right. people per se all right so you want to be a vendor with like i'm a vendor with hisd with city of houston fort ben i'm a vendor with multiple agencies with the port of houston all that when you're a vendor now your vendor company provides a service what is that service there's a certain code that NAICS code comes up again what is that code what who are you because they'll ask you well, what is your code is it professional services is it financial services if i'm a vendor providing macbooks and computers and whatnot there's a code for that now right. sometimes them as vendors have their own codes they have a translation everybody's got their own little system right so mm -hmm. you sign up as a vendor to do x if there's a contract on the table hey we need a thousand macbooks okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna be a vendor and i'm gonna provide you with that you pay me x here's my cost boom and it's really that simple and yeah. if you're providing macbooks professional services landscaping services painting services whatever you're providing a product or a service for that agency and you as a vendor can do that yeah it's really that simple honestly so it's all about being a vendor so good i like i like the how the terminology right yep. so it's all about setting yourself up to be a vendor i think that's not as powerful right there so yeah so doing all of that um you know you you talked a little bit uh about it earlier but you know we always see the lies of like hey i'm heading to this procurement meeting can you talk about those meetings like what goes down why should more people get into those rooms right um and i've you know i i think there's a bunch of times where it goes back to what's not popular you know it's popular to go to the club when the rapper's about to pop up it's popular to go to the sporting event it's popular to do all of those things right but these are the meetings and the events that we need to be at these are the backdoor meetings that are happening like there's a bunch of things that are put in the new i don't know when we read the newspaper anymore but they told you hey we're having this meeting on saturday at 12 p.m those I'm just giving examples, but those are the meetings that we really need to be at because that's really where the money is moving. One thing you talked about earlier was following the money. So um, how can people really get started locally, right? Just tapping into some of these different meetings and just getting in the room there. Whatever city you're in, mm -hmm. Houston, Atlanta, wherever, main Metroplex, you want to Google Atlanta Procurement Forum. Okay. uh atlanta chamber of commerce um atlanta atlanta city planner economic development director right on in in those procurement forms the word procurement every company has a purchasing and a procurement department every company they purchase and procure bring in every tablet but every service the government does training. They do so many things in the city. So I'll say Houston, for example. The last Tuesday of every month is the Greater Houston Procurement Forum. So all the major developments in the city from real estate on down, all the infrastructure projects going on, every and anything going on in the city. And a lot of it's around real estate because that's where the money's at right now. Mm -hmm. So all your major real estate companies, Austin Commercial, Vaughn Commercial, um, uh, DK, are all these big guys that build the hospitals and the labs parking garages whatever right they're there so you're sitting next to multi-million billion dollar ceos right yeah. next to you and they're there to tell the city and its constituents us what they're doing and so it's just, so it's just like in, in the in the in the movies where you see everybody come to that meeting and all the board members from that city they're all sitting down there and they're telling hey we, we got plans to build this 41 million dollars whatever here so that's it those are the meetings that you're talking about that people got to get into the room got to got to got to got to got to got to um you gotta rub elbows with those people because man these people are are are, are touchable and attainable so you know you just being in the room you know they're gonna take notice and say hey you know and and that goes back to that form of that point of really networking like it's super 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 duper important right to to network with people um and shoot i want to network with people that got a billion dollars or a uh, hundred million and they dollars. got it to and they got it to spend i'll i'll give you an example right there's a there's a program in houston called a section three we've heard of section eight everybody heard of section eight yeah. housing right but there's mm -hmm. section three affordable housing 
yeah. community development certifications and platform. Yeah. Ms. Catherine has a budget of $400 million in just her office alone for real estate development in the city of Houston. Yeah, Everything I'm saying happens in Houston happens everywhere else. Exactly. So that's the masterminds you want to. I need to go to. find Atlanta, Miss Catherine. Yes. Yeah. Well, I can help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> but go yeah. to the Atlanta procurement forum. Go yeah. to the Atlanta Black Chamber Chamber of Commerce and the and the mayor, the the city procurement directors, the economic development directors. That person right now, they are developing the economy of the whole city. Everybody's city has a five ten year plan. Exactly. If you go read the city plan, go just Google it. Any right. any city you're in, five, 10 year plan. They'll tell you what they're doing. Nothing happens by accident. Gentrification exactly. doesn't happen by accident. They're planning yeah, they this stuff out. Elements. Yeah. Nah. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah. nah. It's, and, and and I always talk to people about pay, paying attention to change, right? You know, I think there's a lot of times where we're we'll come back and we'll be like, oh man, I remember five years ago this was here, but then now it's changed and it's different. Like, I think this is so important to, um, you know, so important from a value standpoint of even if you even if you were just looking to write and it just goes kind of to the market research side. You want to know where you're placing your business at. Right. You want to know exactly where where are you set if you're setting up a, a storefront, where are you placing that storefront? What other things are coming near? Right. What areas are you are, are you looking at? And I think you can gather a lot of information from this. Um, you know, just by, like I said, it goes back to doing that market research, which is so important. So the principles of business and getting bank ready in, in 2023. So, you know, coach, you gave a lot of game here. Um, you know, we do have the tour coming up that I know you'll definitely be a part of when we tap down in Houston, looking forward to tapping in with you again. Um, it's always a good time, but coach, how can people really tap in with you and, and, and learn more? Because, you know, we only have like usually an hour here on the show, man. It's, I mean, this this right here is like, like people can't expect to get this NBA type level of game in like an hour. I think they're gonna be able to stick. You know, this gonna be able to stick. We got almost about three hundred people tapped in live here. We'll probably have multi thousands of people that watch this recording. But how can people tap in with you and get this information? How can they get started with you? Because you got a lot of a, a lot of things to share. We'll definitely do a part two. But how can people tap in with you and, and really get started with a lot of this stuff? Uh, I use my social media, Instagram and LinkedIn in particular as a platform to showcase what's going on out there. So definitely follow me on IG, Coach John Austin. Uh, I think my name's at the bottom, J-E-A-N. Follow me there. Follow me on LinkedIn because the LinkedIn conversations are getting there for sure. And uh, I want people to understand how LinkedIn works compared to Instagram. And you'll see me in two different lights. Uh, the coachaustin.com is our website. Go there, look over the website and see what I put out. We have a news curator. We got a news ticker. We've got free grants on the website. We've got a bunch of things there. And those yeah. of you who want to work with me and say, hey, coach, I want you to help my business get bank ready. There's a bank ready tab. You scroll down. It'll say apply here. Fill that form out. When you hit submit, you're in there. We'll look it over and get you in the right program. Uh, the right bank ready pack is that'll work for you guys, man. That's the best best way to find me. Best way to find me. Yeah, nah, definitely. I want to say, man, I I mean, I really appreciate the game that you've given. Um, any before we wrap up, any 2023 bold predictions that you have for the people? Oh uh, man, man. Yeah. Um, you're gonna see what recession really looks like because it's gonna get interesting. But it's going to be a barbell economy type that's going to be have and have nots to where those that are positioned properly following the money and really getting in this government contract game and just positioning yourself appropriately, you'll be fine. Those that do not and have what got you through COVID will not get you through this next year or two. Trust mm -hmm. me, it, it will not. I've seen it and I've studied it. Bold predictions, AI, cybersecurity, real estate development, healthcare. And professional services are people who know what they're talking about. The the social media gurus are going to get stabbed in the heart and go die a slow death, yeah. um, quite frankly. But if you can find you find yourself a good recession proof business that's been around for ten or fifteen years, you will sustain your way through and cash flow your way through. Some of us won't even feel a blip through this thing, and that's yeah. going to be my prediction. A lot of us won't feel a blip, but some of us going to get get really clapped on. So learn a skill set and really get in and study. 
It's not about hard, hard, hard work and that grind. Uh, it is about disciplined, strategic work getting through this thing, man. Uh, yeah. Stop markets going to rebound pretty decent, uh, but it's it's going to be some nasty stuff in the water, man. So please do not just sit by and wait and let this thing happen. Uh, yeah. Please put yourself in position to, to win with a sustainable, non-sexy cash flowing business and you'll be good to go, man. Yep. Nah. So, you, I mean, you talked a lot about it. Um, I see Uncle Charles, you know, he just went ahead and posted some uh, AI cyber uh, healthcare and machine learning. You know, I talk, I, I was talking today that AI is going to take people's jobs. Um, it's just, a, it's not an if, it's just a matter of when um, AI technology is coming. It's here. Um, it's not coming, excuse me. It is here. And um, you're going to really, really, really see that. I believe that in 2023, 2024, these are still grind years. These are the times where it's not going to be sexy. It's not going to be cute. You're not going to see sexy returns on a stock market. These are the times that you have to build your position. So the message that I leave you guys going into 2023, do not allow your 2022 to define you. If you lost money this year, if you made some mistakes, cool. Guess what? Get back up, right? Continue to go out there. This is a marathon, not a sprint. A lot of people thought that this was a sprint. A lot of people thought, yo, you're going to get rich quick. You're going to become the best options trader, the best business guru. You're going to get a quarter million dollars in business credit and you're just going to go ham. And a lot of people's in reality, a lot of people really a lot of people really got clapped because of not having the right expectations. Anything that you want to do in life is going to take time. So you have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with yourself when it comes to business, when it comes to investing in these stocks. Tonight's episode, I feel like really taught you why certain stocks ain't moving right now, because there's a lot of moving pieces and parts into what's going to make these businesses really grind. Right. And I guarantee if you go to some of these meetings that coach is talking about, you're going to see the topics covered like AI, cyber, healthcare, machine learning. You're going to be able to see where the government is looking to spend money in certain school systems, in certain areas, in certain counties. You're going to be able to directly be able to see the change that's happening. Now, the question I'm going to leave you with, are you still going to be a consumer of this change or are you actually going to become an investor? Because black people have a bad habit of being consumers of change and never being investors of change. So that's how I'm going to leave you all here with this one. We'll see you in 2023. Coach will be back and will be in Houston. Tap in with us January 19th, 18th and 19th. Tap in with us. We'll be in Houston and we'll be dropping some game. We see the GOAT stepped in, Mark Monroe. You know what it is. He's coming back next year. We got shows lined up here Monday, Tuesday. Rumors about a Wednesday show. So the Come Up Series is the number one place for you to be. We're going to have action-packed information all days throughout the week, giving you guys this game and this stuff, man. So we appreciate y'all. Coach showed out tonight. Shout out to Uncle Charles. Shout out to all you guys, man. And we appreciate the love. Peace out.